Hi folks, it's Evil here from Thunamis Lure Company. Welcome to today's episode of Thunamis Fishing Tips. I am double fisted today, folks. Uh, I've got two rods rigged up, one with a chartreuse head, one with a black head, one with a paddle tail, one with a fork tail. So the black head with the fork tail, more of a subtle presentation. The chartreuse head with the paddle tail, more of an aggressive presentation. So we had a cold front move through. I don't know if these fish are gonna be active or if I've gotta finesse them a little more. So I'm gonna open up with the finesse presentation with the fork tail. And I'm gonna work this jig. Now, speaking of jig, let's talk a little bit about jigging. So when it comes to jigging, very, very important, you have to feel the bottom. So that means your jig head has to be heavy enough to make contact with the bottom. So for example, if you're fishing the D Detroit River and you go with a quarter ounce or three eighths ounce jig head, you're, you're, chances are you're not gonna catch any fish. You need a heavier jig because it's strong current. You need half ounce, three quarter, one ounce in the, in the Detroit River, uh, depending on the current. If you're fishing a lake, if you're fishing a lake or a reservoir and you're fishing, you know, 10, 15 feet of water, 20 feet of water, then you get away with a quarter ounce or three eighths ounce jig. You start to go a little deeper, you might want to go to a heavy, a half ounce jig. Uh, again, and if you're fishing river or current, three quarter, one ounce, but you have to feel that bottom contact. As you jig it, you want to feel that jig kind of hit the bottom and you want your jig to, to fall on a semi slack line so it falls straight down. And uh, the other thing, now I'm running the flexi jig today, which as you know, flexes down on the hook set. And um, when you use any jig with a plastic, an artificial plastic, make sure the jig ha head has a good hook on it. You want a good hook with a good hook gap. And the reason you want that hook gap is because when you put the plastic jigs on, um, it takes up some of that hook gap so you want to make sure the hook is big enough to leave your hook gap so and you also want to make sure your plastics are on your jig head as naturally as possible so here you take a look I'll show you these two jigs right here you'll see the chartreuse and the black and you'll see how I've rigged them and you'll see they both have decent hook gaps for hook setting that's exactly what you want so you set up properly you bounce the jig off the bottom and you see if you can get into some fish. And today, folks, we're looking for that walleye bite. So stay tuned. Hopefully I can get myself into a nice fish. In fact, <laughs> speaking of which, he just picked it up. Unbelievable. Nice, nice. That was a subtle bite. Now remember, this is the fork tail. So that was a, that was a real subtle, subtle bite and a pickup. So that cold front means maybe these fish are just a little less aggressive today. And I'm hoping it's a walleye. And I didn't get a look at him. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's Mr. Walleye right there. Oh, and a good one too. Oh yes, look at that. <laughs> How's that for a start to my day, folks? Right there. I'm telling you, these jigging, maintaining that bottom contact, having all those proper things put in place, makes for great results. Look at this fish. Okay, I always like to take a photo, typically of the first fish of the day, for our Facebook and Instagram friends. So I am going to do that right now. You get a photo of this beauty right there, and we'll come right back at you. <laughs> Look at the teeth. Look at the teeth, check out the teeth on that walleye right there. But if you notice, the teeth are not packed in there like a, like a pike. The teeth are, um, they're kind of scattered a bit. So you're able to use line without having to run a steel leader for, uh, for walleye. But that's a beautiful, beautiful walleye right there. That's going to make for some really good eating, gorgeous fish. Nice white tip on the tail. I'd love to see that white tip in the water. He's going right in the box. Okay. In the box he goes. And you know where I'm going, folks. 
I'm going right back out there for another cast and looking for another fish. Please folks, keep those few little pointers in mind. Jigging is really, really easy. It's not difficult at all. And uh, just a few little pointers there that hopefully will help put you on to some more fish and have a great day on the water. I'm already having myself a great day out here. I'm just getting started. I always love it when you catch a fish in the first cast. That's a sign of good things to come. But wherever you're tuning in from today, and I know we have viewers from all over the world, and I gotta tell you, we are humbled uh, by that folks. We really appreciate that. It's great to see people from all over the world and leaving comments as well. We really, really appreciate that also. Um, so wherever you're tuning in from today, thanks for spending time with us. And until next time, good luck and good fishing. <laughs>